Hi, welcome to A Little Bit Scattered, episode six. My name is Becky, and I live in Portland, Oregon with my husband, our three kids, and our black lab, um, who is about four years old. I was going to say she's a puppy, but she's not a puppy. She's four years old. So, um, welcome. Thank you for watching A Little Bit Scattered. Um, I'm just going to fix the lighting here. I'm trying to get the lighting a little bit better. The last couple of uh, videos I did, I felt like this light back here was a little too bright. So um, it's so hard, especially in Portland, to close the, the blinds when it's a beautiful day because typically in Portland, we have very gray days. Um, which I don't mind, but when it is sunny, I love to open up um, the curtains, but it just was creating too much of a glare. So today is a, a absolutely beautiful day outside. Um, my husband and I like to take walks on Tuesdays. He's moved his schedule around so that uh, both he and I are off on Tuesdays. So um, that makes it really fun. And we've just been in the kind of rhythm and routine of going, taking our dog for a walk on Tuesdays. And, um, it's just been, since he's done that, it's like, I think it's been about three weeks and every Tuesday has just been beautiful. Um, today, uh, just gorgeous. The leaves have been spectacular and, um, it was chilly though. There was a, a wind that just made it really cool. So I think it's in like this morning when I woke up, it was about 36. I think the high is supposed to be 49 today. So it's not going to get too warm um, and stay pretty cool with the wind. But anyway, um, it's been a couple weeks since I last did a video and um, I was thinking I just, it's been a busy month. It's October. Today is, let's see, I'm looking at my calendar, October 29th. So we have had um, a fun month, but busy. We, my, our middle son's birthday is on the 19th. And I think the last video I made, I was talking about making a sweater for him. And I think that's just kind of everything kind of fell away in terms of my knitting um, because I was so focused on just getting his sweater done. So I want to pick up with that. Um, it is my finished object. I haven't actually given it to him yet um, because I wanted to show you all and I still have threads to or the, um, yeah, the yarn, the, what do you call it? I guess it's the threads to tuck in and I want to block it and I have just one more little piece to finish on that so I want to show you that but I'm going to pick up where I left off which was I think the last time I talked to you all I was considering I had dyed my own yarn for his sweater and I was going to try to mix because one I did two skeins that came out very similar and then the third skein came out more red. And so I, uh, dyed it again and then it was very dark. And so I was going to try to mix those two and see how it came out. And I was afraid it was going to be stripey and my fears came true. <laughs> it was very stripey. And so I just didn't like the look of it. Um, I've just thrown stuff all over the place here. Okay, so I just, I kept this sample because I wanted to show you. So this is the dyed yarn and it's just a 100% wool. And then this was the too dark dyed. And you can see it's such a contrast. And so, <laughs> I don't know, I think I was in a little bit of denial of like, oh, it should all work. But let me show you what happened. It created, let's see, how am I going to show you? It's rolling up so much. 
be like this. Created a lovely stripe. I actually really like this look, just not for his sweater. So I'm going to hold off and see what I can come up with. Um, maybe just a cowl that has this stripe. I think it's really pretty together. It makes a nice subtle stripe because it is the same. It's the same dye, just different intensities. And so I think it goes really well together. Um, so I'm just going to figure out my yarn yardage and figure out what I can do with that. But so then I had to go, I think this was plan C because this was plan B. My first, the first yarn I was going to do ended up being bulky instead of a worsted weight or Aaron. And so I had to, that was my first. And then this was my second. So plan B and now, and then I had to go to a plan C. So the other thing that I was concerned about with that wool that I just showed you is it is a hundred percent wool and my son is 16 now and he's not going to want to wash it by hand. Um, and just the way he does laundry, everything just kind of gets thrown in together. And so the chances of that getting washed is too great and it would be miniature because it would felt. And so I thought, okay, I need to do something in acrylic. So I went over my our office where we um, have our own private practice, counseling practice, is near a Michael's. So um, between clients, I walked over there and I found um, a nice yarn that is, um, oh, I didn't bring the tag. I think it's called Impeccable by... Panton, 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 and it's 100% acrylic, um, and it happened to be on sale. I didn't even realize until I got it up to the um, checkout, and it was $1.99 a skein, so this sweater ends up being about $10, which is crazy. Um, so I want to show you the finished object. Oh, let me show you the pattern first. It's called the chimney sweater. And I had, um, shown him several different sweaters and he liked this one. Uh, although he did think this was, he didn't look very closely and he thought it was a hoodie. So I think he was a little surprised. It's not a hoodie. It's actually kind of more like a cowl neck. I can show you another picture that gives a better, shows a better, um, let's see. And so, yeah, he just tried it on and he's like, I thought it was a, um, so see, it's just a very, it's a long cowl and it just kind of bunches up. Um, so he thought it was a hoodie, but hopefully he'll still like it. Um, so this is the chimney sweater and it is by Elizabeth St Stinks, um, S T E E N K S. And here's the sweater. Oops. Wrinkly. Here's the cowl part. And so this just scrunches down and there is, I don't know if you can tell, there are two holes here, like button holes. And in that is going to be, I'm working, this is my last part. I think it's long enough. It's the I cord. So the I cord just will go and it's in the lighter color. So it'll just, I'll just put that in there. That'll hang there. So you can tighten that cowl. And then it's uh, top down, seamless, with just a basic rib for this cuff and for the bottom. And for my son, I just, I didn't even go a needle size down. Usually you do on the rib and the, um, but I wanted it just to be really straight. 
And so I just kept the same needle size. I think it's a size seven that I used. So it turned out great. It fits him perfectly, which I was really happy about. Um, so we'll just see if he likes the cowl. I tried it on. I actually really like it. <laughs> I think it's, it's a really cute sweater. In fact, I was thinking before I did the sleeves, I think it would be really cute as a sleeveless sweater, uh, maybe in a cotton with the cowl, I think could be really cute. So I could just, you know, see if I could figure out, adjust the pattern a little bit and do that. But love the pattern. Very easy to follow. Um, do you think if there was anything unique about it? It's really straightforward. Um, all the measurements were right on. Uh, yeah, so I loved it. And hopefully he will love it too. You know, a 16 year old boy doesn't get super excited. <laughs> so can't expect him to be jumping around. He's like, I think I'll wear it. <laughs> so, um, but I have to say, I'm, I don't knit with acrylic very often. I'm actually, the other project that I've mentioned before is a um, Afghan that's in acrylic and it's the Knit Picks acrylic. Um, oh, I can't think of, I'm thinking Comfort, but I think that's the Barocco. I can't think of the name of the Knit Picks acrylic. Um, but this one, it was just, I don't know. After knitting with wool, it's so hard to knit with other fibers because wool is just so stretchy and easy to knit with. And I just felt like this was a little more difficult to knit with and my fingers got more tired. It felt it it's very bulky, like really kind of thick um for a worsted weight. Um but I just and I think it'll be great cuz it'll keep him nice and warm, but it just wasn't as much fun to knit with this yarn. Um and I think that's just the difference between wool and acrylic. Um, and you know, a man-made fiber is just harder. I think it's harder on your hands and it just doesn't slide off the needles as quickly. So I felt like this took a lot longer than I usually knit a sweater. And so I feel like this has been the last, probably the last two weeks. Where did I start? I started the 10th. Um, yeah, started the 10th. So it's been a good, and it's the 28th, so it's over two weeks, it's almost three weeks. So um, I'm glad it's done. And now I can work with, on something else that is wool. So because it was a little like hard to knit and slow going, I did take a couple breaks and, and work on wool <laughs> just to give myself a little break from the acrylic. And um, so on our walks, I'm going to just show you, I have to show you what the leaves look like. So I picked up a few leaves the other day. Look at these leaves. I mean, these are the colors that you're just, we're just surrounded by right now. Kind of this very translucent yellow this brown. Um, these, some of these are my favorites where they have just the twinge, the tinge of so deep red, but then there's yellow and that's the same. There's a, like yellow with green. Um, here's a little bit of green with yellow. It's just so beautiful. And so I've been so inspired. I picked these leaves because I want these to be inspiration for dyeing. And I mentioned before just the color schemes for the fall and winter from fashion weeks, like in Paris and Milan. Um, it's interesting because there's like apricot is one color. So there's, you can kind of get the apricot color out of here. Actually, there's these really bright, bright, they've kind of darkened as they've dried really bright, more kind of almost magenta apricot color. 
And then the other color in the Fashion Week is the is like this wine deep red, which I feel like we're seeing a lot of. I have a lot. I'm really drawn to the reds. I just think they're just so stunning. So like just giving you an example. Like the colors that are just, and this is just us walking around our neighborhood and around the lake near us. Just beautiful. So that has been incredibly inspirational. And so as my break for, um, from the chimney sweater and the acrylic yarn, I decided I wanted to make some knit leaves. Um, and I found a couple free patterns on Ravelry. And you'll have to pardon me because I spilled coffee before I could put these in my plastic sleeves that I like to, to do because obviously I spill coffee and tea. Um, the first one is by Carrie Lucas and it's just Autumn Knits. And it's more of, oh, I don't know my trees well enough, but it's more of this kind of leaf pattern. This maple leaf, some kind of version of that. Um, and so let me show you. Just taken some old scrap yarn and made. A leaf and then so that's one oh here I did another one this is out of some of my hand dyed actually the brown was hand dyed as well my hand dyed yarn that I used in my um, shawl mosaic shawl I love this yarn Ugh. So that's this leaf pattern. And again, it's a free pattern on Ravelry and it knit, these knit up so quick and they're fun, really easy. And it was such a nice break with my lovely wool. And the other is Ariana Frasca. And there's a couple here. I'll show you this picture. Again, another free pattern on Ravelry. And these are more, this is more like this style leaf. This is very easy. Um, Little tweed, another tweed, gray, yellow. I think these are just really fun. So I'm gonna lean over a little bit. In the back, what I have is a branch that I got on a walk, I think it was a couple years ago. And over our kitchen, so my kitchen sink has a window that looks out on our really beautiful backyard. It's kind of this woodsy backyard. And this branch fits up over the window. And at Christmas, I hung um, like little ornaments. I'm trying to think if I hung any of my knitted ornaments. I don't think I did. I actually just hung some of the ornaments that I got on my Christmas tree, which are like these um, stars like rusty stars and wooden snowflakes so very natural and so I hung that up and I hung those ornaments at different levels and it was so cute and everybody commented on it just I don't know sometimes things just kind of make an impact and for whatever reason over the sink with the light it was really pretty so I decided you can see I have a couple of these knit leaves hanging and then I'll put, I'll keep knitting more and I'll put these guys and hang them and do the same thing over my kitchen sink over the window and um, just hang all these knitted leaves. And they're just really cute. They've just turned out really, I just love them. Um, and I love that there's just different um, 
kinds of leaves. So you can do the different yarn, but also a different style of leaf. And you can see, like I did bigger needles with this than this. Also, you can just change the um, thickness of the yarn, which will change the size of the leaf. And I just always keep my extra yarn. So this is another hand dyed. So that'll be pretty. This is the one I did. Um, so yeah, I just have lots of little leftover yarn. This is another hand dyed, which I did do a leaf, but, but it's hanging back there. This is really pretty. It has blues and grays and oranges and tans and browns. Very pretty. So yeah, so I just have kind of a bag full of these extra yarn thickness and um, just knit up these leaves when I just, again, need a break or just do something really quick and satisfying. Um, and that's been super fun. And it's just been completely inspired by our beautiful leaves right now. Uh, I was afraid in September, I think I told you, like it started raining and it was cold and it felt like winter was already here. And typically September is really beautiful. Um, and we have this really sunny weather and then the leaves are changing. And so I was afraid we just missed all of that. But it turned out that October has just been that. Um, it's just been really sunny. The leaves have been stunning. Um, yeah, it's just been a really beautiful, beautiful month. And I'm so glad we didn't <laughs> miss it. I was like, oh, September is too soon for it to just be winter already. So, so yeah, I think the leaves have inspired me to do my little leaf uh, on the branches, but it's also inspired me to do some more dyeing. Um, and so I'm going to show you later what I've been dyeing. Um, and um, yeah, I'm super excited, but this is, these are going to be kind of my inspiration um, to make some more yarn in this, in these colors. Um, I do want to say, I talked about this sweater that I'm wearing last week, but look at how similar. This is the Caribou, this is the Knit Picks uh, Bulky Wool of the Andes um, in the Caribou colorway. I've worn this a lot. My daughter doesn't like to wear the same thing in a row, <laughs> and I'm completely opposite. I wear, I love to wear sweaters over and over and over again. And this one, I just I had a feeling I would love this one, and it's been true. This is the Heidi Kermare sweater. It's called Avalanche, and it's just a cable sweater, bulky. It's just very classic and it's been fun to wear with jeans. I wore it with a skirt the other day. It was really, it's just very, um, uh, I'm trying to think of a good word to describe. Like it just goes with everything. It can be dressed up, it can be casual, it can, you know, but it's warm, which is the main thing. So, um, but yeah, I'll show you more about my dyeing. The next thing I want to show you is the next sweater I want to make now that I'm almost done with my son's sweater. And I've talked about this one. This is the, not the chimney. This is the Sunday cardigan by Petite Knits. I hope it's, there's not a, sorry if the light is weird. Um, and this is, this is the yarn I'm using. It's the Ink and Tweed uh, by Fibra Natura. And this is what I thought I was going to do my sun sweater out of. But it turned out to be bulky instead of worsted because I didn't have my glasses and I didn't know that it was a worsted weight. So it's a black with a gray uh, tweed. 
And I think this is going to be really beautiful. Now, she always knits with, um, I think it's a mohair. Let me look here. Yeah. She always, like, knits together mohair and um, Inca wool, which just gives her sweaters this lovely halo. And I love that look. Um, however, I think the tweed is going to accomplish a, a similar feel. It's not going to have the halo, but I think it's going to have that nice depth um, with the tweed. So this, I can't wait to get going on this one. So I've obviously printed out the pattern. I have my wool, I have my needles ready. So I just, I'm making myself finish my sun sweater, get that blocked on the blocking mat. And then once that's on there, I can start my Sunday cardigan. And I'm really excited to have a cardigan. I've been looking in my um, closet lately. And again, because it's sunny, but cold, I've just wanted to layer more. And so I've been missing having cardigans. I don't really oh, I'm trying to think. I have one cardigan, but I think I'm not sure where it is. Something I've knit. I think I might have it somewhere to be rewashed and blocked and getting the, you know, the pills off of the sweater. So really, I just don't really have anything right now, which is why I'm really craving a good cardigan. And I think this is just going to go with everything. So that's going to be my next project. And then I really haven't, I haven't knit on anything else. I have my pine bow cowl haven't knit on that and my afghan haven't knit on that because it really has just been focused on my son's sweater and the fall leaves and now I'm going to um, put petite knit Sunday cardigan on the needles and I really am going to try <laughs> you guys can hold me accountable I'm really going to try to rotate those three so that I'm working on all of them because I do tend to get focused on one sweater and then it just becomes all consuming. Um, the other exciting thing for me is the NBA basketball has started and I love watching um, our Portland Trailblazers. And so we've already had, they've already had like three games. And so that's really helped me finish off my son's sweater. I don't know. There's something about watching basketball as opposed to like watching a show or a movie that I love to knit to. I think with the sh shows or movies, I can get lost in the story or I feel like I have to pay attention to the dialogue more. And basketball, I can just be knitting and I can, you know, be glancing up, but even just hearing what's going on and you know, it's just, I feel like it's perfect knitting, watching, um, at least for me. Um, I love basketball. I played basketball when I was younger and I just love the game and I love watching. Yeah. I just love watching the NBA. So that's fun. And I think I will get a lot of knitting done while I'm watching these games. So that's, um, we're heading into that season. All right, now I'd love to show you. I've been spinning and dying more the last couple of weeks, which is really exciting because my spinning has not, I have not spun in forever. And I think I have consistently spun every day for the last couple of weeks, which has been really great. And I mentioned wanting to do that because I really need to get consistent with my, um, just the texture and the size of the yarn. Um, really, yeah, I'm really trying to work on just keeping the, the thread the same size and consistency. So um, let me show you. I, I did, I spun this a while ago and I absolutely love it. So this is my first... So I have a couple other skeins that I've spun, but this is my first, I dyed the fiber and then I spun it yarn. So it's from raw undyed fiber to this. 
which is really fun that it's like my first one. But look at how I love, I actually love the texture of this. I love the colors and the variances in the colors. But you can see my inconsistency. Like it's really thick here and it's really thinner here. This is, I've been trying to figure out what the weight would even be. Definitely, I would say it's probably worsted to bulky. Um, and I, again, I love it. I look at it and just, it just makes me happy because I love how the colors plied together. I love the dyeing that I did on it. Um, but it shows you just how much I need to work on consistency. So that's kind of an older version. This is something that I spun again a while ago. And I, you can see I've gotten, a, I got a little bit better. But there's still, like if you look here, that's a thicker strand. And then these are thinner strands. And then this is what I've been, what I just spun most recently. Now don't look at this one because this is the very end. Mm, sorry about the focus. Let's see here. There we go. So it's better. <laughs> at least in my, in my mind, it's just more consistent. Um, Again, this is fiber that I dyed. So I dyed the three colors. You can see it's, I dyed gray. And then I think this is a mag, kind of a magenta red and then a, more of a teal. So the process of spinning is you spin, so I wanted to spin three different colors. Um, and then once, and then now I, and then I wanted to dye three other colors and I want to ply them together and spin them and then ply these together so that they're, um, yeah, so these colors and these colors mix, if that makes sense. Um, it's kind of like, this is, that's what I did here. So, this is actually more colors because this was mostly blues. I think I had two blues and two grays and some white where this is going to be three colors here. And then let me show you. So this is what I've dyed and I'm going to do some kind of combination of, so this is um, just kind of a, a nice yellow. And I did different, uh, I wanted it to be kind of light and dark. And then I did orange. And again, just some variation of light and dark. I, I let the orange soak a lot more. I really wanted a kind of a deeper, almost a saffron color for the orange. So that's one um, skein of fiber that I dyed. And then, so this, just to give you an example. So this is the fiber that I dyed for the green, the teal green. Into that little uh, extra. And then I did green. And I really, I actually wanted this to be more stripey. So I, I really did a, a lot of variance. It's almost, it, it is a light green. It almost looks white on the camera. And kind of a violet, purpley. color. So 
now that I've really spun all except for this little piece that I found on here, I'm going to mix that and apply it. And, you know, I'm going to spin up this. And I've already started on the yellow and the orange. And then I'm going to apply these together. So to be very colorful. But my hope is I'm, I'm trying to keep this real consistent. And I want to, um, my hope is to achieve kind of a sport DK weight. And then I can make the Andrea Maori um, night, night shift cowl. Um, that's very colorful. And these are the colors I want in that because I want it to be really kind of bright and colorful. I may throw in just a regular raw for the white, just for some variants as well. But I'll show you what that looks like plied. It's going to be really pretty. So I just have to, so this is the majority of what I've spun this week. And then hopefully I'll get to spinning this and combinations of these. And then um, I'll show you that. And then I'll show you what it looks like when you apply them together. It's really beautiful. It's kind of marled and um, just the different color combinations, how they, you know, like sometimes it'll be like this orange with the gray. And I'm just super excited. It's fun to see how it comes together. And it just kind of creates, it's like you have all the right ingredients and then it creates this beautiful fabric. Um, so, so yeah, that's been super fun to just do some spinning. It's been really spinning. I, I'm sure I'll, you, you know, you've heard that spinning is, is much more or can be much more meditative. It's, um, I've been listening to some audio books while I spin or just music or sometimes just silence. It's nice to just be spinning and it just creates, it's really rhythmic because you're, you know, pushing the pedal down and you're just kind of feeding the fiber at a pretty consistent clip. And there's something about that, that, you know, as a counselor, I'm always encouraging people to find things to really create spaces to think and feel. And this is a really, for me, it's a really good place for me to do that. And to just really kind of contemplate what's going on in my heart and, you know, thinking about people and thinking about our kids and what we, you know, just all the things that kind of come, come to the surface when you give yourself some space and aren't just constantly doing and distracted. Um, and so spinning and knitting is that for me too. Um, but sometimes knitting can get a little, you know, especially if I'm following a pattern or something, it's, it's less of that because I'm really actually concentrating on the knitting itself. Whereas spinning is much more of a, a meditative, um, contemplative, you know, experience because it's working with your hands in such a way that just kind of frees you up to think and feel. So I have actually really, really loved that. And and it's funny, as I move into this kind of fall winter season, which, you know, the daylight hours are less, um, it just, it actually feels good to kind of go into this season with doing more spinning and kind of creating that space. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to continue to do that a little. Sometimes I spin right before bed, which has been really nice. It's just kind of relaxing, thinking through the day. Or sometimes I spin first thing in the morning as I'm anticipating my day. So yeah, that's when I found myself doing the spinning most. So, um, and then dyeing, I was looking at some of the yarn that I've dyed. And I decided that there were some that I just didn't like. Um, I did one skein that was really um, bright yellow. And it felt too, first of all, it felt too bright. Second of all, it felt too monochromatic. And there wasn't enough depth to it. I, I think that's what I love about using multiple colors when I dye because I love the depth that it creates. So um, I decided to 
take the yellow and dye it with some green and kind of create another color or multiple colors. Um, and for whatever reason, sometimes, sometimes in my dyeing, it just gets really uh, chaotic. And so it's lost its skein shape, but I can still show you the colors and I will be getting this all in order. But let me show you <laughs> my mess. This is such a mess, but I want to show you the different colors. So you can see the yellow and then you've got the green and this ball of yarn that is such a mess. But actually it's not that hard to unwind. I actually put it on my, my winder and it, it all gets evened out. But yeah, I'm excited to see how this is gonna look in a skein. So I'll I'll do that and get that up. And then I think it'll be really pretty. It's in a sock weight yarn. So um, I'd love to see how that knits up in, into a pair of socks. And then I also had a green skein that was again, too bright. It was kind of almost like a neon green and, and it just wasn't. I, in my dye, I'm just committed to, I mean, I, I do want to eventually sell my yarn, my dyed yarn, but my commitment is just to, you know, create colors that I love, that I would want to knit with. And that may not be everybody's palette or what they're drawn to, but I, if I start thinking about, oh, I want to make this for other people's kind of color palettes that they enjoy, then it, that I, it's not true to, I just can only do what's true to me. And then if other people like that, that's great. Um, otherwise I think it just gets, you know, I end up doing things that I don't like, which I don't want to do that. So, so I just want to stay true to what I love. And so again, this was too bright. I didn't love it. It felt, yeah just felt too neon and I just wanted to tone it down and I wanted to create what I love, which is this multifaceted um, uh, mixture of greens. And I love how this turned out. So it's not showing up as green. Let's see if I pull it back a little bit, if it will be greener. Not really. Interesting. It looks a lot lighter. So, <laughs> but you can see the difference in the tones. And there is definitely some blue in the green. Blues, yellows all in the same green family, but um, more yellow green, more blue green. So I don't know, I wish that showed up better. It doesn't feel true to what it is, but I just love it. I love how it turned out. So really excited about that. Um, and so, yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun to kind of veer off from just straight knitting to dyeing um, by both fiber and some yarn. Um, but I, I am going to have to make a decision soon on what yarn I want to purchase and then really get back into dying again, because I really don't, I just don't have anything to die, <laughs> to die. So I'm dying things that I've already died before that I didn't really love. So, which is fine. I think it's great. And I'm, I'm just perfecting kind of what I want and what I love and the processes of dying that I enjoy better than others. And, you know, kind of the product that I want to create. So it's been a fun process. So that's basically it for just looking to see. Sometimes I, after I do this video, I think, oh, I didn't share about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just been, it's been busy. Um, we've been doing some kind of festive things. We went to a haunted corn maze the other night as a family. Um, it was so fun, very muddy, but, and scary, <laughs> but really fun. That's just been kind of a tradition we've been doing. 
um, for a few years now. And then this week we have Halloween coming up. So um, my daughter has actually been decorating our house. She did this very cool, to show you, she did this, hall, this little hallway that we have. She hung uh, candles that she got from like the dollar store. And she hung them kind of like Harry Potter in their big, like the big um, hall that they have meetings in and eat in. Oh, let me just show you. It's so, so fun. Let's see if I swipe this way. Whoops. I'm going to see. Turned out so good. And it's just this little hallway, which is perfect because it couldn't, you couldn't do all of this. And she just hung all of those up. So we all have that as part of our, I think that's all for the decorating. Yeah. <laughs> this was from the haunted maze. We took a picture with the spider above us. Um, but yeah, it just turned out great. So that's been fun. I don't know if we'll, we usually, um, carve pumpkins the day before just because they get rotten so quickly. And so we try not to do it too soon, but I don't know if we're going to do that this year. You know, the kids are getting older and sometimes they like want to keep these traditions they did as little, little kids. Um, other times they're like, yeah, no, we'd rather just have a party with our friends or whatever. So we may, we'll see what happens. It's usually kind of last minute spontaneous and they may just have friends over and watch movies. And um, it's a Thursday night, so it's actually going to be school the next day. Um, so probably can't stay up too late, but we'll see. That that should be fun. And um, yeah, then we're into November and then we've got Thanksgiving coming, um, which will be fun. So um, I've mentioned in my last few videos that Tuesday night, I always have my niece and her husband over for dinner. And so just to kind of keep you updated on that, we're doing a Leslie Nope from Parks and Rec. If you guys have seen that show, we're doing a waffle night in honor of Leslie Nope. So I'm going to make waffles. It's going to be more like breakfast for dinner. I'm going to do scrambled eggs and bacon, um, but mostly waffles with different kinds of jams that I've made over the summer syrup, whipped cream, of course, whipped cream. Um, and so that's the plan for tonight. And then, yeah, I guess we're heading into November and, uh, I look forward to showing you, um, more of my spinning, more of my dyeing. And then, um, hopefully I can get this, uh, Sunday cardigan on the needles to at least show you for next time. So thanks for stopping by. Again, please like these videos if you are enjoying them and any comments you'd like to make, I'd love to hear from you. And um, yes, yeah, so please subscribe. This would be great. I'd love to just get to know you guys better. And um, yeah, I think that's it. So have a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Take care.